Magnetic field surrounding a thin straight conductor. Consider a thin straight wire of finite length carrying a constant current I and placed along the x-axis as shown in the figure. Determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at point P, which is on the y-axis, due to this current. So uh, we look at our finite length conductor carrying a uniform current I, it's on the x-axis. So we're interested in the magnetic field at point P, which is at a distance A uh, from the uh, center. And we can see that because this is the origin here, and we can see that the uh, if you take a current element here uh, of length ds, so you can see the, uh, the radial distance between this current element and point P is r, and the r hat vector, which is the vector unit vector that points from this uh, current element to point P, makes an angle theta with respect to the x-axis on which uh, we have the s vector. Uh, so i hat is on the x-axis, j hat is the unit vector on the y-axis, and then we have z hat coming out of the page. Now let's write uh, Biot-Savarlow. Biot-Savarlow says the magnetic field due to this current element will be mu zero i over four pi ds, the length vector, crossed with r hat divided by r square. Now we need to know the uh, angle between the ds vector and r hat vector. So that's the angle I called theta here. And you can see that this angle theta is related to the angle gamma <clears throat> with respect to the y-axis uh, because theta is 90 minus gamma. So when we do the cross product, we will need sine of the angle between ds vector and r hat vector. So sine theta is sine 90 minus gamma, which is cosine gamma. So we will use cosine of the angle gamma. So this is <clears throat> now mu zero i over four pi. The length of the ds vector is dx because it's on the x-axis. Uh, r hat is uh, has unit length because it's a unit vector. The angle between them is theta, so it is dx sine theta divided by r square. And this is, if we substitute for sine theta cosine gamma, mu zero i over four pi dx cosine gamma. So this is in k-hat direction. So let's check with the right hand rule. ds cross r-hat, four fingers of the right hand point towards the current. We curl them uh, four, four fingers towards r-hat. The thumb points out of the page, so it's in k-hat direction. So it's mu zero i over four pi dx cosine gamma divided by r square in k-hat direction. Now you can notice that I'm at a distance x from the origin here, and this is uh, this point P is at a distance a from the uh, center. So I can write tangent gamma as x divided by a. So I see that tangent of this angle gamma is x divided by a. So x is equal to a tangent gamma. So what is dx then? dx is a secant square gamma d gamma and at the same time cosine gamma from this uh, right triangle here will be equal to a divided by r. So cosine gamma is a divided by r. So for r we can write a divided by cosine gamma.
which is a secant gamma. Okay, so let's go back to the magnetic field due to this current element. dB is mu zero i over four pi. Now for dx, we will substitute a secant square gamma d gamma and then we have cosine gamma and for r square we will substitute a square over uh, cosine square or a square secant square gamma so this is r so we will, we will have here at the bottom a square secant square gamma now you can see that secant square gammas will cancel and then we will get rid of one of the a's here and uh, this is in k hat direction once again uh, so that's going to be mu zero i over four pi a and we're left with cosine gamma d gamma in k hat direction okay so if I go from uh, if this is not at the center if I go from angle gamma 1 to gamma 2 you can see here uh, then I can perform this integration then I will say that the magnetic field is mu 0 i over 4 pi a we integrate from angle gamma 1 to gamma 2 cosine gamma d gamma in k hat direction. So the integral of uh, cosine gamma will give us minus sine, uh, uh, it will give us plus sine gamma. So we will have uh, mu zero i over 4 pi a. Uh, sine gamma evaluated between gamma 1 and gamma 2 which will be sine of gamma 2 minus sine of gamma 1 in k hat direction but here I should note that um, I, I define this as the positive direction for the angle so that's theta hat direction so gamma 1 will be a negative angle so uh, here I note that gamma 1 angle is less than 0 degrees because it's in the clockwise direction. So let me look at two limits here. If this is an infinite wire, what would happen? If this is an infinite wire, I will see that gamma 1 will be minus pi over 2 because as you can see as I increase the size of this wire here gamma 1 is increasing in the limit it's infinite it goes to minus pi over 2 and gamma 2 is increasing in this limit it will become plus pi over 2 okay so then the magnetic field will become mu zero i over four pi a and uh, now I have sine 90 which is 1 minus sine of minus 90 which is minus 1 so this is going to become plus 1 because of the minus sign here and k hat so this will give me for the magnetic field of an infinite wire at a distance a from the wire perpendicular distance a from the wire to be mu zero i over 2 pi a and this will be in k hat direction uh, now if this is a symmetric wire if it was if the origin was at the center let me look at that limit If this is a symmetric wire, 
then um, we can write these two angles absolute value of gamma 1 will be equal to absolute value of gamma 2 which is gamma then I will have the magnetic field uh, sine of gamma minus sine of minus gamma that will give me 2 sine gamma so gamma 1 is minus gamma gamma 2 is plus gamma so I have mu 0 i where gamma is positive mu 0 i over 2 pi a sine gamma in k hat direction for the magnetic field okay so uh we have looked at magnetic fields surrounding a thin straight conductor. The conductor is placed on the x-axis, so the origin may be in the middle, it may be off the uh, center. Uh, we've considered uh, both cases. Now we pick a current element of length ds, and we look at the unit vector between this current element and the point of interest, that's r hat vector. And the angle between r hat and ds we call theta, which is related to the angle gamma with respect to the y-axis of the uh, radial vector between the p and uh, pointing from p towards the current element. So this uh, basically allows us to uh, write in the uh, Biosa-Varlov mu zero i over four pi ds cross r hat over r square where we have to consider the sine of the angle between ds and r hat. Sine of theta is sine of 90 minus gamma, so that's cosine of gamma. And cosine of gamma is a over r, and tangent gamma is x over a. So I picked this current element at a distance x from the origin. So this is now mu zero i over four pi, magnitude of ds vector, that's dx, magnitude of r hat 1, sine of the angle between them, sine theta divided by r square, and I've used the right-hand rule, i hat cross j hat is k hat, ds cross r hat gives me k hat direction. Okay, um, using the right-hand rule. So, for tangent gamma is equal to x over a, x is equal to a tangent gamma, and dx is a secant square gamma d gamma, and Cosine gamma is A over R, or R is equal to A secant gamma. So I substitute for dx, A secant square gamma d gamma, for sine theta, cosine gamma, for R square, A square secant square gamma. Secant square gammas cancel, one of the A's disappears, so this A goes here, mu zero I over four pi A, cosine gamma d gamma in k hat direction. The integral of cosine is sine, so I'm integrating between two limits, gamma 1 and gamma 2, where gamma 1 is negative. So it's in the clockwise direction, gamma 2 is in counterclockwise direction, that's a positive angle. So this is sine gamma 2 minus sine gamma 1. If this is an infinite wire, gamma 1 will be minus pi over 2, gamma 2 will be plus pi over 2, we have mu 0 i over 2 pi a. If gamma 1 is minus gamma, gamma 2 is plus gamma, so we have a, a symmetric wire. In this case, we will have mu 0 i over 2 pi a sine gamma. Why? Because you will have sine gamma minus sine of minus gamma, which is 2 sine gamma. This will get rid of this 4, make it 2. Mu 0 i over 2 pi a sine gamma k hat will be the final answer in that limit.